$9,000 models, agency contracts, League of Legends actually installed on your computer. God dang, is this what it takes to be a VTuber anymore? How's a broke basic bitch indie VTuber to stand a chance in this ocean of aspiring talent? There are only so many slots and so many agencies and self-starting takes a lot of resources. And for all that, you might get accused of chasing clouds? 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 But you know, when inspiration strikes, you gotta get to work. Luck is a function of preparedness and opportunity, you know? But just how much debt, financial or emotional, are you to go into for this passion project? How do we go about it sustainably and without yielding to the crushing weight of the existential universe through which we hurtle daily? These are the questions pressing on us with abyssopelagic pressure as we confront the Hadean horrors of content creation in 2023. Okay, look, you and I cannot compete with big VTubers, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. Agencies in particular have money, connections, and most importantly, amassed experience that allows for a level of productivity that one-man operations simply can't keep up with. But this needn't keep you from making something unique and special with its own appeal. So let's fire up some positive affirmation ASMR, get us a warm drink, and buckle in to consider the state of small-scale indie VTubing. Would that we could relive those halcyon days of winter 2020 when everyone was excited and optimistic about their recent arrival at rabbit hole crush depth, drunk with the anticipation of catching their small bit of wave amid the great VTuber boom. Those months when it was all networking threads and waiting to get your first model art back, what a time that was to be alive. People were still doing Among Us collabs. But by the following spring, and ever since, there's been enough time for the excitement to wear off, and people start getting a case of the existentials. As the aspiration slowly gives way to the grind, many of us start to harbor doubts about our worth as content creatures, and as entertainers, and even as corporeal beings. On a related note, it's already been long enough for 2020 to be a bygone nostalgic era. Dwell on that, memento mori for a moment, motherfucker. Even if you manage to steer clear of the abundant VTuber drama, it can be hard as nails to find a sense of your place in the world. Sometimes, friends, you simply cannot avoid the void. Like everyone knows, success is not guaranteed. But sometimes it seems like new talents show up out of nowhere and hit the ground running, while others struggle along month to month with scarcely any growth. What to tell the people who sometimes feel like they are missing their wave? The first important thing to keep in mind is just because it seems like someone popped up out of nowhere does not mean they did. They may have been working at content in some form for years before they struck a big in their current iteration. So keep in mind there's something of an effort iceberg phenomenon. Yep, once you start to master the basics and your new content making life becomes more of a routine, you find yourself not only faced with mounting decision paralysis, but also an ever encroaching awareness of the numbers. Now, generally, the wisdom for dealing with numbers and metrics is phrased as something like, don't focus on them. Which is not to say you should ignore them completely. Numbers provide a lot of useful information, but view counts, followers, there's nothing you can do about these things on a day-to-day -day basis, so dwelling on them can't help but be a waste of mental effort. Numbers are more useful in aggregate. That mostly means looking at traffic trends over time and seeing if you can replicate successes and avoid repeating failures. And that will mostly amount to trial and error. Like, look, as of right now, I have two pieces of media to have gotten over 10,000 views. One is a video essay on male VTubers, and the other is a TikTok plot summary of Echo the Dolphin. 10,000 is the biggest viewership for me by a huge margin, and about the only similarity between these two things is that they aren't stream VODs. Otherwise, they're totally different formats, about totally different subjects, and they seem to appeal to fundamentally different audiences. The tough part is I have no idea how to iterate on either of these successes to invite similar success in the future. I can only keep pursuing projects that interest me and hope it catches the attention of the like-minded. There is a lot I have to learn about marketing and memeing and branding and all that, but all this is to illustrate one important fact about content creation. No one actually knows how to grow. Now, Ocus, you silly bitch boy, I hear you say, rising out of your seat, moved to imminent violence by your fury. Someone out there knows how to grow. Surely all these mega talents didn't get to where they are purely by accident. 
No, not by accident, exactly. Remember the effort iceberg? They all spent lots of time cultivating whatever skills and marketing know-how let them to be poised to capitalize on those sweet, sweet opportunities when they arrive. Super High Patch Wolf has a nearly two hour long video debunking paid access how to grow on YouTube courses. It's well worth spending the two hours having an existential crisis with it. The gist is that each artist that gets big does so under circumstances so unique as to be irreplicable. What worked in 2012, 2017, and 2023 are all going to be totally different. It's somewhat reassuring and yet mildly disconcerting to hear way bigger creators, even some agency people, talk about feeling like they can't keep up or even like they're falling behind. It shows how much of it is in our own heads and no matter matter how big we may ever get, certain perceptual problems are unlikely to ever go away. But in the meantime, we should probably take a moment to ask ourselves, what exactly is it that bothers us about the idea of not growing? The most understandable way I've seen this summarized is with the sentiment, I just want proof I'm doing a good job. After all, most social media literally structures its feedback around quantifying how much someone likes something. And as we've seen, often the more people there are who think you're doing a good job, the more people who viscerally think you aren't. More broadly, I think there's a sense of urgency to hurry up and grow to preempt the eventuality that you'll have to quit doing what you like in order to focus all your attention on doing some job that you hate. However long success lasts, it might be helpful to keep in mind the fact that we are currently doing exactly what we like, and the possibility of having to quit someday might be an evil sufficient to the day thereupon, or whatever. In the not too distant past, none of us would even have the opportunity to heuristically make our own content on a scale like we're doing as VTubers. It's a unique situation in human history that it's even feasible to start a media outlet that can even briefly persist broadcasting live to an audience numbering in the single digits. I think in our fear of stalling out or never growing, we often overlook some of the actual benefits that there are to being small in the first place. For one thing, there's a lot less pressure. As a little guy, you get to make all your biggest and most small brain mistakes with very few eyes on you. I'm talking about tech problems, running dry on topics, doxing yourself like a goober. These things have a chance of happening even to people with management, and we're going at it all on our own. Boy, will it be a relief to know at most two or three people witnessed your lowest points, huh? And you won't have to deal with the kind of pressure that comes with preparing for a huge agency debut for a long time. Relish the anonymity as you make your biggest blunders. So then, where do we end this thing? I've been doing this for like two years now. I guess if there's just a few pieces of advice I've picked up, it would be these. Don't stream too much, especially when just starting out. Get used to the idea of having to stream to zero people for a while and look at it as practice mastering the art of coming up with topics without an active chat to bounce off of. Also, most of your time dedicated to content creation should be spent off stream on refinement. And trust me, it'll be an easier pill to swallow to realize you had something wrong with a stream that was only an hour long than one that was five or six hours long. Second is that super good production quality is always nice, but it only does so much. And the only area where it particularly matters is sound. Even then, you don't need to go crazy on an expensive mic. When you do start spending money, do so almost strategically, based on whatever will help increase your productivity and diversify your content the most. Start making content on a budget basis and save up for the fancy stuff over time. That way you'll at least know for sure if you'll want to commit to it for the long term. Plus, people will pay you for the skills involved in making content long before they'll pay you for your actual content. Start. Lots of times people ask for advice on what kind of games they should play on stream. Really, the only good policy here is to play whatever genuinely interests you the most. Sometimes you get lucky and your taste will align with the algorithm's caprice, but even then, don't make the mistake of assuming gaming streams or gaming streams is something you have to do. Some VTubers manage to carve out very distinct niches for themselves, making totally different styles of content. And lest we forget, Kizuna I was the original non-streaming VTuber. Well, yep, yeah, that's about all I got to say on this subject. Time to take it easy with some good old fashioned low effort content for a while. Meanwhile, make sure you like and subscribe and watch all my extremely succinct YouTube shorts and my TikToks. Subscribe to me on the other social medias or, or, or not. I don't, I don't know what it is. It's your life. Do with it what you will. Uh, what you will. What you will. Uh.